peace and blessings. Mighty Dangerously here of Dangerously Alive Wellness. Their collective energy reading for this week, August 12, 2024, all the way through August 18th. Although technically this reading is going to be valid up until the full moon that we have coming on August 19th, full moon in Aquarius next Monday, literally seven days from now. So this reading is going to cover the energy of the period leading up until then. I pulled the cards already. I shuffled and we're doing a week ahead spread. There are there's technically more than seven cards here because two of these have clarifiers, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe is how that works. Making sure I didn't confuse myself. Yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> um, because I had it in a slightly different layout and I changed it so that it can accommodate the space that I have here. This table is a little small. And as you can see, I've got it adorned quite a bit, which is it's important to cultivate your reading space so that you can be tuned in. So our very first position, this card here represents the Knight of Wands. I'm sorry, the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords, our very first card here represents our week as a whole, as a collective. And this is represented here by the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords represents fast paced decisions, sometimes hasty decisions. Sometimes moving too quickly in directions that we may end up regretting. So for me, this is a warning sign to not be too reactive, to be careful in your communications, careful in how you express yourself, careful also in how you receive information and what you do with it. We are in Mercury retrograde territory. So on August 4th, Mercury was in the side of Virgo and started its retrograde period. That was just a week ago. So now Mercury's technically still in Virgo, but retrograding back into the sign of Leo. So what that means is our areas of the way we are creatively expressing ourselves, the ways that we are believing and thinking about ourselves, especially in positions of leadership um, or our positions in society. We might be reevaluating the way our, our creative self-expression. We might be revisiting past ideas. There may also be some challenges in the way we are seeking validation, whether it's on a subconscious level or a conscious level. Some misunderstandings might go into dramatic territory. So these are just some themes that are coming up with Mercury retrograding in Leo that we'll talk about in a separate section. For now, we're going to get back to this reading. And that's the Knight of Swords energy, right? Be careful how we're expressing ourselves. Be careful what we choose to say, how we choose to say it, who we choose to say it to. And also be careful of how we allow those thoughts and feelings to control our actions or decide what we do next. So my advice would be to not move too hastily, to take a beat with anything that comes up this week. Don't be so reactive. Don't be ready to go. Don't be fired up. I feel like we might be tested quite a bit as a collective. We've already been seeing how it's been going and it doesn't seem like the energy stopping anytime soon. So yes, stay on guard, so to speak. <laughs> stay on your tens out here. Don't fall for the bait. Don't be gullible. Keep your third eye open for sure. So that's the Knight of Swords energy. And yeah, as I was saying about keeping your third eye open, the Knight of Swords is also about cutting through confusion too. It's getting to the clarity of something. So there might be opportunities to do that, to further express something, to further explain something. But I still would just be mindful of how you're doing that. 
and in what spaces you're doing that. Because just sit with it for a second before you decide to tell all your business or, <laughs> or go explaining yourself or defending yourself in any type of situation or just following any kind of ideas or feelings too fast, being quick to anger, quick to respond, that kind of thing. Just try to sit with it for a second before responding. The second card we have here is the Page of Swords. The Page of Swords here, new information coming in, new information, new communication. So this is coming in the position of something unexpected that will arise. So there might be some news coming this week for us as a collective that is going to surprise us. That's going to maybe knock us off our square a little bit. That might stress us the fuck out. It might feel burdensome in some type of way. It might feel like, damn, I'm, I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of working through this. I'm tired of having this situation be an issue. The Nine of Wands is definitely being at your wit's end a little bit. And also, it's, it's, yeah, I'm tired of fighting. It's, yeah, I've been persevering. Yeah, I've been getting through these battles, but I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted of having to work this far. And I'm not going to lie. That's how I feel about society as a whole in general. So for me, that's like a regular day. But something about news that's going to come up this week for us as a collective is going to maybe feel burdensome. It might feel a little heavy. It might be because we don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to respond to it. We're not sure what the answers are. We're looking for the answers. Or honestly, Page of Swords could be some truth being revealed in some type of way that is also, damn, I didn't know I if I wanted to know that. And that the truth does that sometimes, a lot of times. So information is powerful. Be on the lookout for what news comes your way this week that might shift your energy a little bit the third position here is the knight of wands and it's saying how can we stay grounded and balanced at this time the knight of wands is an interesting energy in response to that because the knight of wands is about it's about movement it's about expression it's about I always think of dancing with this card, just like being free and, and just moving. But it's about fast moving. It's about physical movement, energy, creative expression. It's a bit of a fiery energy on the fun light side. It's like transmuting. So it's the way I see this, especially in response to this question, is like when you are having, or when you're going through something really difficult and you decide to just dance it out. So you're transmuting that energy, like you're using the pain or the sadness that you were feeling to now, like, now you're in this like happy bliss while you're dancing and it's like purging this energy. So it's like finding ways to elevate the energy, to transmute the energy, to purify what's going on. You might find your balance in some type of movement and some type of creative expression in doing something spontaneous, something that comes spontaneously to you. So that's something to think about for this week, how that Knight of Wands can, and also just having some fun. So maybe you've been working a lot. I know I've been very work focused. I've been having to force myself to just do things that are not related to my work in some type of way <laughs> to just enjoy myself. It's because, man, I'm the type of person, I have to move what my brain wants to do these things and and I, yeah so <laughs> my brain is in work mode right now so it's hard to pull away from that when that's what it wants to do but the knight of wands is remember there's another side to it's happened to your creative energy it's happened to your passion it's happened to your desires it's having fun just to have fun also the wands are also representative of spiritual energy as well as fire i think i also said that in this movement we get in tune with spirit more in this activity. We can reconnect to our spiritual energy. That's going to help us find the balance in whatever this is. So yeah, creating something from this energy, creating something from whatever is causing disruption or confusion or just shaking things up for you a little bit. Number four, an important emotion that we will feel this week. And the answer for that we have is the Eight of Wands. That's an important emotion we'll feel this week. For me, this reads as emotions changing fast, which kind of 
feels like this, the Knight of Swords. It's like fast paced changes, expressions, emotions, being surprised by how you feel like something may be sweeping you off your feet, but maybe not in the most positive of ways, something that is surprising, but also eight of wands in general is just, it's, it's, it is about movement. It's about fast paced change. It's about things being manifested quickly, right? So it's like being like careful about what you think about because you can manifest that, right? Being careful about what you say, because you'll get maybe the instant karma of that back. And I think that's the message is be mindful of your emotions or what you create from an emotional space this week or what emotions you put out this week, because it's going to create more than you realize. Also, I feel like Eight of Wands represents how fast things can change. So I think it's also to be mindful of like how fast these changes can start happening in your life. And that might create a bit of insecurity. It might create a bit of self-doubt. And that is something that might be a trigger that you need to work on. It might be a part of an existing theme that's going on for you at this time, tapping more into your confidence, tapping more into your fire, into your desire, into your passions, how you're using your creativity to elevate you, to push you through your challenges, to navigate your obstacles, right? To find your new solutions, to find your ways. So I think that can be some of what's being spoken about here in, in response to that it's yeah important emotions that will feel this week so i think yeah another thing if i didn't already say this and i apologize if i'm repeating myself but it could be just saying being surprised by a fear that you have being surprised by maybe still having some self-doubt or insecure energies or insecurities in something that you might be working on and just don't beat yourself up too much about that if you realize that. If there's something that you're doing that you're like, yo, I'm still worried about this. I'm still scared of this. I'm still fearing this. I still think this way. It's okay, but just acknowledge it. Um, we all have blind spots. We all have things we need to work on. We all have areas that need to be highlighted sometimes. So that's just something to think about. Something that will inspire us this week. We've got the seven of wands energy in response to that question. And this is interesting to me as well. We might be inspired by what we perceive our limitations to be or what limitations or restrictions we've had to deal with in the past. We might be inspired by our challenges on some way like that. <laughs> what I was hearing and feeling was just like when you're excited to fight back it's that energy like oh yeah i'm ready i'm ready for the fight <laughs> so maybe we're inspired by having to stand up for something maybe that's standing up for ourselves maybe we're inspired by the rebellion of it the, the energy that's required of us but the Seven of Wands is also, it's definitely a protective card. It's like having your guard up. It's being worried that people might come try you or people are competing or maybe jealous attacks or anything that you feel like it's like a bias that you're wanting to guard yourself against and prepare. It's like being prepared, you know being prepared for war, being ready for whatever comes. So maybe whatever happens this week is going to inspire that type of energy within us that maybe we haven't felt in a long time, that desire to stand up for something, that desire to fight for something, that desire to protect something. And maybe how passionate we are about it might surprise us. Maybe we didn't know we cared so much about certain things. The next card we have in position six is how spirit guides will speak to us this week. And we've got the nine of pentacles. So I think that's an interesting response to how spirit will speak to us this week. That reads to me that we'll start having maybe some physical manifestations of the things that we've been working toward or asking for or creating, building, manifesting 
it's saying okay something's brewing we might start to see some of those signs we might start to maybe get a call back from a job that we applied to a long time ago and didn't think we were going to get or maybe it's some money that comes because nine of pentacles can be some money being manifested it's also just celebrating something you've created um, or just brought to life that you've planted a seed for some time ago. And it's like being proud of the abundance that you've been able to create for yourself. And abundance is not always money, but that's the word we're going to use here because it is pentacles. Pentacles are about some abundance. It's about security. It's about things that create that for you. The resources and energies that create that for you. So it could be money, it could be time, it could be opportunities, it could be resources of various nature, right? So our number seven card we have is the King of Cups. So how to best support ourselves this week as the King of Cups? I think this is great. Because the King of Cups is saying to nurture yourself, to pay attention to your emotions, but don't go spilling yourself all over the place. It's about, <laughs> I always get that when I think about this card, I always get the term manage your emotions, which always bothers me a little bit because I don't like that phrase. I think it's a little bit passive aggressive and maybe disrespectful, manage your emotions. But we do need to manage our emotions, right? We need to contain ourselves to a certain degree so that we're responsible with our energy, so that we're not, like I said, spilling out all over the place onto others. It's about having compassion with ourselves, compassion with others nurturing ourselves and when we need a bit of softness and vulnerability but at the same time it's not overly coddling yourself it's definitely about emotional maturity rising to the occasion to do what needs to be done from an emotional capacity but it's not overindulgent like it's not oh let's just go be sad it's not that kind of thing but it's also not the, the fake positivity oh suck it up let's just be happy it's okay Let's actually look at how we feel. Let's deal with how we feel. Let's make a plan for it. Let's even make some spaces for it if we need to. But yes, let's deal with it emotionally. Sorry, maturely is, is what I want to say. So that is our collective read for this week, August 8th to the 14th. I'm going to pull our Oracle messages for the collective and then I'm going to pause the video and come back and do our sign by sign reads. Okay, let's get into it. So we're going to start with the crystal healing deck. Hmm. So we got the crystal healing deck here. Shuffle on camera so you guys can see it. I love this deck. Not only does it give you a crystal message and its meaning, but it also gives you an affirmation for each crystal too. So what energies do we need for the collective? What crystal energy could we benefit from for the collective? For all astrological signs, for all zodiac signs, all sun signs. All moon signs, all rising signs, for all the collective spirits and energies that I'm connected to that will view this video. What messages do they need to hear this week, August 8th to the 14th, 2020, for their highest good? Mm, what messages needed? Ooh, yellow jasper. I love it. Be in the present moment. And this is interesting. This makes me think about the Knight of Wands energy, being the present moment. A lot of the energy that came up for this week is about fast paced things changing. It started with the Knight of Swords. So Knight of Swords is, is moving fast. You know what I mean? It's, oh, I have an idea and I'm just going to go do it. It's being really impulsive, right? It's like having a thought and running with it. It's like hearing something and responding too fast, speaking too fast, right? It's being like, overly present fault right and then the knight of wands is enjoy the moment and just enjoy life be present be here express yourself 
is giving solar plexus energy, which is that fire center um, of our energy system. Yellow Jasper, be in the present moment. Do you find yourself worrying about the future and preoccupied with the past? Yellow Jasper with its warm yellow, the color for joy and lightheartedness, advises you to just be in the present moment. The past has no power over you and your future is being created from your now moment. Choose to be joyful and to see the good in any situation, not only in your present moment to be more enjoyable, you will be creating a more optimal future. I choose to be in the present moment with positive thoughts. I love it. But yeah, let's keep it positive. Let's not get down on ourselves. Let's not get stressed out and worn out. Sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times, especially these transits we've been in, some of them are so long and ongoing that it just feels like, oh my God, how much more of this can I take? And then we hear the things that are happening in the world and we go, oh my God, how much more of this can I take? It's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get down on yourself. It's easy to get down on the world. And it's in those moments that we need to remind ourselves to have stronger faith. We have to remind ourselves to tap into our power, to tap into our abilities, to tap into our creation, to tap into our spirit, to overcome these obstacles, to infuse ourselves with the courage and strength that we need to move forward. Our herbal astrology message is Damiana, which is so interesting. I was just thinking about Damiana. Damiana is a lovely herb that <laughs> sometimes is used in depression or anxiety treatments because it can help to keep you very much present in the moment to just have fun and be in the lightness of things. Um, it can be also an aphrodisiac, but you know, it's not that way for everybody, it, but I do find it as a, it's a happy, it's a very happy herb. So the upright meaning of it is magnetism, attraction, spirit, soulmates, relationships, intimacy, sacred play, finding the beloved within. Astrological ruler, Venus and Pluto. The guidance for Damiana is Damiana represents the universal principle of the beloved. Within relationships and within ourselves, the alchemy of polarity is what we're made of. And this integration of opposites is that which births the beloved. This card represents the journey of coming together and reuniting within oneself, a lover, friend, family member, or an important person in your life. You are in an important period of making choices and establishing healthy boundaries, especially with those you'd like to deepen and expand or those that you feel need to be shed or distance yourself from. Damiana reminds us of the importance of shaking off rigidity that often depletes creative reserves and sacred play. If you feel unsatisfied and emotionally unavailable, even to those whom you love, take time to be in solitude and nourish your creative centers. Often separation becomes the basis to reunite once again in higher frequency. True self-love is the key to lasting relationships with others and most importantly with yourself. So I definitely see the alignments there with this message about just nurturing how you feel, creating space for how you feel, having some fun, transmuting the energies, removing ourselves from this state of self-protection from the other. That can also be with the Seven of Wands energy. Maybe something about the realization that we're in that energy inspires us to do better, inspires us to open up more, inspires us to trust more, to love more. That king of cups energy baba calabash here is also about that it's like how do we need to love on ourselves a little bit more where do we need to be practicing that divine love uh, i will take a picture of this and add it to the reading so that we can see that on there um going to do one more for the collective. Actually, I would like to still have that card out while we're doing this. I didn't mean to put that back so fast. I'd like to still see them. Okay. And we're going to pull one...
from the Wild Unknown Alchemy deck. Okay, there's a nice little shuffle. Do one more time so that it's really there. There we go. <laughs> Interesting. Let's, let's let's talk about it. This is what's coming first this week. I mean, it did say there's going to be some surprises. Something's going to... We're going to be tested a little bit this week. So, we're going to definitely have to be testing ourselves to stay grounded for sure. Masa Confusa. Chaos. When an alchemist sits in their laboratory amidst the presence of Masa Confusa, something miraculous is bound to occur. That's because this card, this state is so powerful and all-encompassing that it typically overwhelms the student to the point of despair. Such is the nature of chaos. It is the grand trickster, the topsy-turvy confusion that turns life on its head and spins a web that even the wisest mystic can untangle. That not, I'm sorry, I'm going to read that sentence again. It is the grand trickster, the topsy-turvy confusion that turns life on its head and spins a web not even the wisest mystic can entangle. Baffling, yes. Disorienting, yes. But the seasoned alchemist recognizes it as the most potent point in the alchemical experiment. Wait, observe, do nothing. It is destiny itself that spins the web. Clarity will emerge one strand at a time. Your only task is to breathe. Do not struggle. The three fates hold you in their sights as you free fall toward wisdom. To go deeper, it says, watch the film Dazed and Confused from 1993. To ponder, looking through the eye of a storm. So this week is going to be giving us some of that energy. And again, this resonates with what was shared so far. We've got this. Knight of Swords energy that's representing what's coming up for us as a collective this week. And like I said, that felt to me like a warning to not be too reactive to whatever happens. To not go spinning out of control. Not go believing everything that you see and, and hear to the point where you're like, oh my God, what's happening? Go into the state of panic, right? You got the Page of Swords and what's coming up to surprise us. There's new information coming up, new something that's coming up. It could be stuff that's happening in the media. Sometimes Page of Swords represents things that are happening in the media that changes how we feel about things, that stress us out, that make us feel discouraged. We can't go spinning out of control and we don't always need to respond right away. It's saying to wait, take a beat, observe what's happening, go inside, make sure you're together, keep yourself grounded, don't move into a state, a state of groundlessness, right? Be in the present moment. We've got that yellow jasper energy. Be in the present moment. Yeah. This is what we've got. For our collective reading. So practice our patience. Implement ways to keep yourself grounded. Check your fears and how they might be playing a role in your reactions and your responses and how you deal with people, how your fears may have your walls up to stop you from expressing yourself or connecting with yourself and others. Where do we need to be pouring more love into ourselves, more understanding, more compassion into ourselves for what we are dealing with, what we're moving through, what we're figuring out at this time? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go through the next set of these. It's Leo season. We're going to start with the Leo reading first. For all my Leo people out there, happy birthday. We're going to start with the Leo reading first. And so 
I'm going to end this here and see you guys in a second.